The following is transcribed. Welcome to Bat Soup, the never nutritious, definitely delicious podcast dedicated to the old time radio adventures of Superman and the dynamic duo. Buckle your utility belts for lots of stubborn refusals, plenty of logical persuasion, and desperate plans galore. Before we get to today's adventure, let's pause for this important message. Gang, our glow-in-the-dark kryptonite slime is a huge hit. We've been getting some pretty solid write-ups and quite a number of leading scientific journals, and everybody is wondering just what makes this stuff tick. Why, from the minute you take it out of that can of never-nutritious, definitely delicious bat soup and put it into your special Bat Supers membership kit Petri dish, uh, that warm green glow will light up your imagination with all kinds of ideas. It makes a perfect bedside reading light, and there are no batteries required. Yes, sir. And thanks to our partners at Codename Slingshot, our super secret formula will stay a secret, because what happens in a military lab stays in a military lab, or... Something like that. Anyway, it's just one more advantage of having a top-flight military contractor on your side, gang. And the best part is, to get yours, you don't have to do anything but have your mom pick up a can of Bat Soup available wherever fine podcasts are sold. Uh, Keep a bunch on your shelves for a tasty treat whenever you get hungry. Sometimes the light at the end of the tunnel is an oncoming train. And now, Batsuit presents today's adventure, part three of The Monkey Burglar, as originally broadcast on February 14th, 1947. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Kellogg's Pep. P E P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, as Clark Kent and Batman plan a trap for the monkey burglar, they are unaware that Robin, spotted by the burglar's henchman, is dangerously unprotected. But first, here's a surprise for you. Gang, this is Superman. I want to introduce you to Miss Doris McFerrin, who is the editor of Radio Mirror magazine. Miss McFerrin. Thank you, Superman, and hello, fellas and girls. I came over here today to tell you about something Radio Mirror has done this month that it's never done before. Our editor's page has come out with a special tribute to Superman. Because he's done so much to show folks how important it is to respect each other's rights and to get along together. We've been watching this program for a long time and we think, more than any other show, Superman makes us all want to do the right thing. Listening to your program's good fun, too. That's Radio Mirror's tribute to Superman and to the people behind him. Thank you, Miss McFerrin. That's thanks from me and from the whole Superman staff. And thanks, too, Miss McFerrin, from the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Pep. Kellogg is mighty proud to be part of a program like Superman, a show that stands for all the things that are good and and wholesome and right. Just like Kellogg's Pep adds the wholesome touch to breakfast for growing fellas and girls. Pep with its famous whole wheat nutrition. Pep that tastes so good. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. And now, the adventures of Superman. Identified as wearing a costume similar to Robin's and displaying a similar acrobatic skill, an unknown boy has been electrifying Metropolis by scaling the walls of skyscraper apartments and robbing the wealthy occupants. Inspector Henderson brought Robin face to face with two of the victims each of whom said that Batman's young companion is definitely the spectacular thief whom the newspapers called the Monkey Burglar. Then, to the dismay of Batman and Clark Kent, Robin refused to account for his whereabouts during the robberies and was promptly arrested and jailed. Later, he explained to Batman and Kent that he could not provide an alibi without revealing his identity as Dick Grayson. 
And as we continue now in Robin's cell, Batman says to Kent... We can't let Robin be sentenced for crimes he didn't commit, Clark. And he can't reveal his identity as Dick Grayson either. What do you suggest we do? I wish I knew, Batman, but it looks pretty bad. Sure does. Oh, don't you worry, Robin. We'll get you out of this some way. You hope. The monkey burglar, whoever he is, seems to have me roped, tied, and branded. Well, obviously what we've got to do is find out who the monkey burglar really is. If I could only tell Henderson that the idea of Robin being a thief is ridiculous on the face of it, because he doesn't need the money. I've got plenty, you know. Well, he could only do that by revealing your identity as Bruce Wayne. Exactly. So we're right back where we started. Hey, wait a minute, Batman. What? Just thought of something. Let's go see Inspector Henderson. What for? Got a little idea, which, if it works, might lead us to the monkey burglar. Gee, what is it, Mr. Kent? I'll tell you later, Robin. Meanwhile, keep your chin up. If Inspector Henderson will play ball with us, we'll have you free in jig time. Come on, Batman, let's get out of here. Now, if you'll just listen a moment, Inspector. Look, the... you're wasting your time, Kent. But I tell you, According I'll... to the law, I can hold Robin for 48 hours before he comes up for bail. I know you can. And I'm if only... you think you can talk me into releasing him before that... But you've got to release him, Inspector. That's the only way we can find the monkey burglar. I've already got the monkey burglar. Oh, if you mean Robin, Inspector, you're all wet. Now, just a minute, now, Wait a minute, wait a minute, both of you. Listen to me, Inspector. It's no use, I, Kent. But I only... The evidence I've got against Robin is airtight. What evidence? Yes. Just because a thief dresses up like Robin and a couple of fuddy-duddies mistake him in the, the dark is no... The witnesses are highly responsible men. They made a mistake the same as you did. If you'll now, just you open your eyes, Batman... Please, please. Wait a minute. Cut it out. I know you're upset, Batman, but quiet down, will you? Well, I tell... Please. Okay, Clark. I'm sorry, Inspector. Forget it. Now, look, Inspector... You've known Batman and Robin a long time, haven't you? Yes. And on many occasions, they've been of great aid to the police department, right? Well, yes. What, You've what's never that? had the slightest reason to question their honesty and integrity, have you? Certainly not. Thanks. But what does that prove? It proves that Robin is entitled to the benefit of the doubt. And it there proves is that... no doubt, Kent. Oh, of course Robin there is. was positively identified as the monkey burglar by two victims of the monkey burglar. I still say that's please, a lie. Please, Batman, wait a minute. Let me handle this. Well, okay, okay. Now, look, Inspector. Mr. Spaulding, the banker, says he saw this monkey burglar in his room by moonlight, didn't he? That's right. And then he saw Robin face to face and identified Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. The fellow he saw was Robin size, wearing a similar costume and a hood and half mask. Right. Under those conditions, isn't it conceivable that Mr. Spaulding could very easily mistake the prowler for Robin? Which is obviously what he was meant to do well, because the fellow was impersonating Robin. Oh, rats. The prowler was a youngster, and he climbed the face of a 20-story building using only his hands and a rope. But that... And Robin's the only remarkable kid acrobat and rope expert I ever heard of. Ah, that you ever heard of. But that doesn't mean that Robin is the only remarkable acrobat or rope expert. Don't you see at least the possibility that somebody just as good at those things as Robin is deliberately posing as our young friend in order to throw the police off his track? Why, it's as plain as the nose on your face. Well, yes... Yes, I admit that's a possibility, ah. but I think it's pretty far-fetched. Certainly not more far-fetched than believing Robin's a thief. Oh, come on, Inspector. Come on, give us a chance to clear this boy. Release no, him and... No, can't I can't. But I... The mayor, the newspapers, all the big shots in this town have been riding me on this case, demanding that I catch the monkey burglar. Well, that's just it. I think we can catch the real burglar and recover some of the loot if you'll cooperate. But we've got to act fast. Huh? How? Oh. Well, I've got a little plan, but it depends on your releasing Robin for 48 hours. I'll be responsible for it. So him, will I. And so will Perry White and the Daily Planet. Oh, now, look, just fellas. for 48 hours, Inspector. What can you lose? Well... Just for 48 hours. I guarantee that if we haven't caught the real monkey burglar by that time, we'll turn Robin back to you. That's a fair deal. How about it, Inspector? Well, before I commit myself, what's your plan, Kent? Uh, well, I'd, I'd rather not discuss it yet. It isn't quite perfected. Oh, but now, wait a minute. No, wait a no, minute. No, 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 I've heard that line from you before. Okay, but have I ever given you a bum steer? Well, no, but... All right, then be a good sport and play ball, Inspector. I don't think that deep in your heart you believe Robin is guilty either, so give us a chance to clear him, huh? Oh, drat you, Kent. You could talk the hind leg off of a mule. Then you'll do it? Yes. Yes, I'll release him. That's wonderful. Thanks a lot, Inspector. But only for 48 hours, mind you. That's a bargain. Make out the necessary papers, Inspector. One of us will be right back to pick him up. Come on, Batman. Okay, Ken. Look, Clark, 48 hours doesn't give us much time. What's your plan? I haven't time to explain now, Batman, but if you'll just do as I say and not interrupt me, I think we can put it over. All right, what do you want me to do? First, I want you to take Robin over to Jim Olson's house. To Jim's house? What for? I think he'd be safe there. Tell him to stay there, not to stir out of the house for any reason. Okay, then what? Then you come to the Daily Planet. I ought to have everything worked out by then. But what are you... No more questions now, Batman. i got to get going. I'll explain everything at the planet. So long. 
turning away from Batman, Clark Kent hurries from police headquarters. What is his plan to trap the real monkey burglar and so clear Robin? We'll be back in a moment to find out and to uncover a new and startling development. So stand by. You know, gang, if, if you should ever happen to be kind of blue, I'll bet you could cheer yourself right up just by taking a look at some of those comic buttons in that new series you're collecting from packages of Kellogg's Pet. <laughs> They're sure to hand you a laugh. Take a vitamin Flintheart, for instance, with his old-fashioned fur coat and his black slouch hat and the way he wears his shaggy white hair so long. Then there's Goofy from the comic strip Harold Dean. Oh, he has such a silly grin on his face. And you'll get a kick out of that Superman button, too, because he reminds you of all the wonderful adventures he's had. Believe me, gang, you can't beat the fun of collecting all 18 pep comic buttons in that new series. So uh, ask Mom to get you some more Kellogg's pep when she's marketing tomorrow. That's the only way you can get these snappy new comic buttons, you know. You can't buy them, and you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. But there's a comic button and exclusive prize in every package of Kellogg's Pep you open. And Pep's a prize when it comes to breakfast, too. Makes a dish so golden, toasted, and catchy, and, and crisp that, well, you practically can't resist it. That wonderful sunshine flavor is really something to shout about. So ask Mom for P E P. The Sunshine Cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Following Clark Kent's instructions, Batman has taken Robin to Jimmy Olsen's house. Then, resuming the dress and manner of Bruce Wayne, the wealthy playboy, he tags him to the Daily Planet, where we join him now in Kent's office. Okay, Clark. Robin's at Jim Olsen's house with strict orders to stay undercover. Now, start talking about your plan. Okay, Bruce, here it is. We know that the monkey burglar has been impersonating Robin to keep the police off his own track. Right. So it stands to reason he wouldn't pull off any more robberies while Robin was known to be in jail, would he? Of course not. Say, wait a minute. Is that why you got Henderson to release Robin? Well, naturally. With Robin loose, our acrobatic thief will feel free once again to do his stuff. And that's where you and I come in. You mean we nab him in the act, eh? Right. Oh, that's a tall order. Even for Batman and Superman. Why? How do we know where he's going to strike? Well, the way things shape up, we can be fairly sure. How? Well, I've discovered since I left you that most of the fashionable apartment buildings in Metropolis, where the big money people live... Put on special guards today to protect the buildings from the monkey burglar. Uh Uh-uh, that's not so good. If we're to catch the fellow, I mean. He'll spot the guards and shy off. Right. But not all the classy apartments put on guards, and one of them that didn't is the one we're interested in. All right, but just the same... Wait a minute, listen. I've just done a page one story for the planet, which will be on the streets in an hour. The story announces the release of Robin from jail. Oh? And it also lists the buildings which have hired special guards. I see, but... Another little story, which I had moved from page ten to page one... Tells about Mr. and Mrs. Harvey Sims, the oil millionaires who collect precious jewels. What about them? They've rented an apartment for the rest of the winter in the Windsor Arms. They moved in yesterday with their jewel collection and all. Oh, you mean... Yes, the Windsor Arms is not one of the buildings listed as hiring special guards to watch out for the monkey burglars. So you think our friend will make a try for the Sims jewels? Mm -hmm. If he works according to pattern, as most thieves do, he will. He only works on millionaires, you know. Yes, I know. Then you and I will be waiting near the Windsor Arms tonight. We'll be up in the sky where we have a good view as Superman and Batman. And when our friend shows up... We grab him. Right. Now, if the trap works, and I've got a hunch it will, Robin will be cleared tonight. Eagerly, Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, who are really the famous Superman and Batman, complete their plans for the trap which they hope will net the mysterious monkey burglar and clear Robin. But meanwhile, in a small apartment in another part of the city, a thin, wiry man in shirt sleeves, wearing a hat on the back of his head and smoking a cigar, answers the telephone. Hello? Spider. Yeah, who's this? Jonesy. Oh, Listen, yeah, Jonesy. The cops let that kid Robin go. I know, I just seen it in the papers. Did you tell him? Sure, sure. He left the city jail in a taxi. Good, good. Where'd he go? To a little house over on West Willow Street. Some people named Olson live there. Well, is he still there? Sure. Slim is watching the place while I came over to the corner to phone you. Good boy, Jonesy. This works out swell, just swell. Now, you and Slim stay there. I'll be right out. It's getting dark, so everything will be hunky-dory. What are you going to do, Spider? Uh, what do you suppose, Dopey? You and Slim stay right where you are. I'll be right out. Hanging up the phone, the little man puts on his coat, jams his hat down low over his forehead, and leaves his apartment, his pig-like eyes gleaming as he pats a suspicious bulge near his left arm. This is a development neither Superman nor Batman foresaw. Now what will happen to Robin? And perhaps to Jimmy, too? 
as Superman and Batman set their trap for the monkey burglar, who in turn is setting his trap for Robin. Monday's episode is packed with suspense and action, so don't miss it whatever you do. Tune in Monday, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Hey, what do you have, gang? Kellogg's Corn Flakes, Rice Krispies, Pep, or one of your other favorite Kellogg cereals? Why, you can take your pick every morning at breakfast when Mom sets out Kellogg's Variety. That's the white, green, and red package with ten individual packages Each one a serving just for you. One day you'll choose a shredded cereal, next day one that's popped, and next day a flake cereal made from corn, wheat, or rice. Everyone's a treat because it's a favorite Kellogg's cereal. Make breakfast a picnic of fun. Remind Mom to get you Kellogg's Variety. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. That was part three of The Monkey Burglar from The Adventures of Superman. Thank you for listening. Never miss an episode of Bat Soup by subscribing on your favorite podcatcher. You can also find us on YouTube and Facebook. You can learn more at bat-supe.podbean.com. That'll wrap things up for this episode of Bat Soup, but be sure to tune in next time when you'll hear Inspector Henderson say... Yeah? Oh, yes, Haley. What's that? Well, I'll be a horse's neck. I'll be right out. Right. So long. Before the next exciting scenes of our adventure, please permit us to pause for a meeting of the Law and Order Roundtable, conducted by the Green Hornet. Good evening, friends. If you are between the ages of 15 and 21, please stop, think, and listen, because this message is intended especially for you. Undoubtedly, most of you are preparing yourselves now for the job of tomorrow. That's great. Keep up the good work. But along with preparing yourself for your chosen trade or profession, don't neglect to groom yourself for the job of good citizenship as well. Young Americans, America's hope for the future is in your hands. And that's why it's vitally important that you be well equipped to practice good citizenship, which in the final analysis is the foundation of good government. Incidentally, good government will not tolerate crooked politicians and dishonest officials. Consequently, racket cannot thrive or even exist. Boys and girls, learn all you can now about how your government works. Find out what makes it tick and why. Make it a habit to study both sides of every important political issue. And in addition, study the records of candidates who seek to run your government, locally or nationally. Vote for the candidate who is best qualified by education and experience, who has the best record for honesty, sincerity, and accomplishment. Now, tonight's story reveals how a racketeer named Robertson succeeded in his price-cutting gasoline racket at the expense of the public and the honest gasoline merchants through the judicious bribery of a few unscrupulous men in key positions. In a few years, it will be up to you, boys and girls, to keep unscrupulous men out of key positions by voting intelligently and honestly. Even though some of you are too young to vote now, you're not too young to watch out for racket. And incidentally, if you hear about or know about a racket, won't you write me a letter about it? And that invitation goes for all my listeners. Just address your letter to the Green Hornet in care of the station to which you are listening. And in the meantime, let's get on with our story. <laughs>